Hi everyone, what's up? Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Abby Aslan if you're new here and I am going to finally be doing my how I passed the CPA exam in five months video. Also, I feel like my glasses are a little distracting because they tint a little bit with the sun and it's not even sunny outside, but I feel like it's a little distracting. So I mentioned that I was going to be doing this video on my Instagram, which you should follow if you're not already. Um, back in February when I found out I passed my last exam and it is now July 1st and I'm just now filming this video and I'm very sorry to those of you who like probably thought that it was going to be coming right away when I posted that. Planning this video I just kept putting it off because the last thing I wanted to do was think about these exams like in that much detail and I also kept putting it off because I'm such a perfectionist and I was like I feel like there's no way I can get every single like little tip and detail into one video because I know there's gonna be stuff I forget so I had to really get over the whole perfectionism aspect of it but now I'm at a point where I'm like okay if I don't address something that you're like curious about literally just ask the question below and I will do my best to get to all the questions and answer them and definitely be sure to subscribe if you aren't already I currently work at a big four firm in tax and I have been working for about like a little over six months, I think. So yeah, be sure to subscribe because I do work week in my life videos and weekend in my life videos and that kind of thing. So it's a great time around here. And I would love it if you subscribe because I've been close to 100K for quite some time. So definitely trying to get there. Let's go ahead and get started with the video. I'm going to be sharing my biggest tips. I'm gonna share how I studied, the order of the sections I took, like my practice exam scores. I sat in the state of Texas, so I do have score breakdowns, like my actual score reports and how I did in each section. So I'll also be sharing those. I'll be sharing my calendars. And I think I'm going to leave my calendar down below as a template, which my good friend that was taking the CPA like around the same time I was, she was like always one section or two sections ahead of me. She had sent me this template and I kind of modified it to my schedule and like the way I studied. But overall, the structure of how I studied followed her template. So huge shout out to my friend Logan who did that and gave me her template because I truly think it worked so well for me. So the order that I took the exams in was reg, what did I take second? Audit, FAR, and BEC. And I took it in this order because I really wanted to start with reg because I thought I would feel more comfortable with reg because I did start taking these right after I wrapped up my master's in tax. I went to the University of Alabama for undergrad and graduate school, by the way, well tied. I started with reg because I knew it was definitely more of a dense exam, so I wanted to get either reg or far out of the way since they are a lot more dense, but I felt like reg would be a better confidence boost. I do get test anxiety, so I wanted to start with something that would give me some sort of a confidence boost, hopefully, if I were, were to pass, which I did, but I needed something that felt a little bit more comfortable to start out with. So that's why I started with reg. And I did audit second instead of far. I know a lot of people like to get far out of the way. And honestly, your third exam, in my opinion, is probably the hardest if you're taking these exams back to back to back to back full time. The third is the hardest because you're like right over that hill of like, I'm almost there, but I'm not quite there. And taking far third was definitely really difficult, but I took audit second because I really wanted to get it over with because I thought I was going to struggle with it a lot. I wouldn't have been surprised if it would have taken me multiple times to pass audit. So I just really wanted to get it out of the way. And I wanted to split up reg and far and have something in between them because Reg and FAR are both really dense and they both have a lot of material. I didn't really want to leave an exam that I knew I didn't feel great about last, so that's why I took BEC last. I was a TA in Econ and undergrad, and I also majored in finance in undergrad with accounting, so I felt like BEC was going to be a breeze for me. And while some of the content was, it was also, it took me by surprise and it was really hard to study for just because a lot of the stuff wasn't necessarily related. And with it being my last exam, my motivation was the absolute lowest and it proved to be a little bit more difficult than I anticipated. I started studying the last week of July 2021 and I finished my last exam on January 6th of 2022 and I started work on January 7th of 2022 so I literally took my last exam and started my full-time job the next day and went straight into busy season. So that is the order I took my test and the timeline I took my test. Let me give you the exact dates of when I tested for each exam just for further context. Looking at my Google Calendar right now so I can see my Prometric appointments. So I took reg on Friday, September 3rd, 
and I had to drive the Beaumont to take it because there was nothing available in Houston. So I took that one at 12.30 p.m. and I ended up taking the rest of my exams at 8 a.m. I really did not like the 12.30 p.m. time slot. It was nice to like cram in the morning, but then you were just really tired and I just liked getting them over with. I took audits on October 16th on Saturday at 8 a.m. And then on December 6th on Monday, I took FAR at 8.30 a.m. And then a month later, I took BEC at 8 a.m. on Thursday, January 6th. So that is the breakdown of the timing of when I took my test. I went into the exam thinking that I was going to give myself a lot of, like a good amount of time off in between each exam, but it ended up not working out that way and after I took RAG I gave myself like a week off or like six days off I think and that was after my first exam. For all my other exams after that I gave myself anywhere from like two to four days of like not doing anything, no studying before I started studying for the next section, which might sound a little nuts, but I that was just the way it needed to be in order for my study schedule to work out in my favor and still be able to live my life a little bit because I did go on a trip to Boston for a weekend and I also was taking this throughout Thanksgiving and Christmas. So knowing all of that, I wanted to have flex days because I knew there would be days that I wouldn't be studying all day. So I really just didn't want to take a ton of time off in between exams because I knew it would lead to me procrastinating anyways. It took a lot longer to study for reg than I probably needed. It's because I was doing trial and error trying to figure out the schedule that worked best for me because for reg I actually was taking off one day a week each week when I was studying like I was taking off Saturdays typically or Sundays and I would study every other day. And then in the last two weeks before my exam, I studied every day, but that was the only exam I did that for. After that, all the other exams, I studied every single day, whether it was an hour or eight hours, I was studying every single day because I realized that that was going to eat so much time out of my schedules cumulatively. And if I was, if I was planning for a day off within each week and it was just better for me to just go ahead and get them done. The last thing I wanted was to start work and have to be studying for one of these exams. So it was so important for me to pass all of these the first time around and get them done before I started work full time. But from the time I took my very first exam on September 3rd to January 6th when I took my last one, that is obviously four months, but of course it was more so like five months is the span of time I got them done in because I studied for about like five and a half weeks, I think for reg, maybe six. So right around the five month time frame is what I want to say I passed these exams within. And if I could redo my order, I actually think I would looking back, I think I would maybe redo it as far audit reg and then BC, which I think is probably the most common order that people take it in. Like a lot of people I know take them in that order just to get far out of the way first. But I definitely, definitely, definitely recommend taking far before audit. That was my biggest mistake because there were things on the audit exam that were not really mentioned in the audit book, but they were in far and you wouldn't have known them unless you'd taken far before. Because I remember there was one specific thing and I don't remember what it had to do with on audit and it was on one of the practice exams. And I remember texting my friend and I was like, this is nowhere in the book. And she was like, yeah, that's actually part of FAR. And like, you wouldn't know it unless you had recently taken FAR. Definitely get FAR done before audit and even before BEC, honestly, if you can, just because a lot of the formulas and stuff from FAR carry on and flow into those two exams and even some of the concepts from FAR do that. REG is kind of like on its own and it doesn't really, it can be thrown wherever in the order, but just definitely take FAR before audit and I would also recommend before BEC if you can. Before I go through a walkthrough of my schedule and how I set up my schedule for each exam, I just wanted to get some general tips out of the way for studying for the exams, taking the exams and everything like that. And I also want to preface like all of my tips and my schedule by saying, this is what worked for me personally. Just because it worked for me does not mean it will work for you. And you absolutely do not need to grind this hard to study, but I am the type of person that has to study for a 100 because I know I'm gonna screw up and make mistakes and I know that I'm not gonna remember everything. And I would much rather go into an exam knowing that I literally studied as much as I could and I tried my absolute best and come out of it with that piece, knowing that there was nothing more I could have done, then study for a 75, which is a passing score, and go in just hoping that I got that 75 and just picking and choosing what I was studying. I have friends who 
took the CPA in a very relaxed way. They had to maybe retake one or two sections, but they really didn't do really intense studying and they only had to retake one or two, but they were truly, you know, studying for a 75, which is totally fine. That is the perfect score. Cause I had some people like message me and say like, it's totally not necessary to like really go this intense with studying. Like you don't need to do this, but everybody's different and studying is very subjective, a person to person thing. You have to know what works best for you and you have to do what works best for you. Second tip is I really suggest getting up earlier in the morning and getting started earlier in the day and trying to split up your studying into two sessions rather than doing marathon sessions. This is just what personally worked for me and I'm very, very blessed and fortunate that I do YouTube and I'm able to live off of my YouTube income and I was able to just focus on doing YouTube and studying for this amount of time and I wasn't having to work a traditional job with set hours. That made all the world of a difference when taking these exams. I recommend breaking up your studying into shifts because that will just help your brain power go a lot farther and a lot longer of a way. And that's just personally what worked best for me because it was really nice to be able to just get my studying started like by nine o'clock at the latest and I would typically study up until lunchtime around like one or so and then I would take like a break for about an hour or two hours and I would finish up the rest of my studying up until before dinner. So I know that that's not necessarily feasible if you're also working like a nine to five job, but if you happen to be able to split things up into shifts, if that's a morning shift before you go to work and an evening shift after you go to work, I think that's a lot more achievable and digestible and a lot less intimidating, at least starting studying out like that if you're able to do that and they don't have to be like four hour long shifts it can be two hours and two hours or whatever works best for you my next tip is if you feel like you aren't focused definitely take a break and i think that we tell ourselves that we need breaks a lot more frequently than we do but i also think that we get scared to take breaks because we're scared of like having to get started again but i think literally just taking a quick 10 minute break and just like walking outside and Breathing in some fresh air is sometimes like literally all you need. And I also think that there's a big difference between needing a break and needing to eliminate a distraction. Because if you find that you aren't focused, is it because you're burnt out and you're not retaining anything and you truly need a mental break? Or is it because there's something that's distracting you such as TikTok or your phone sitting there at your desk and you're constantly picking it up every time you get a notification? And if that's the case, then you need to find and identify the distraction and eliminate it. And I, on those days, I would be like, you know what? I need to just stick my phone in another room until I'm done studying and then I can go back and get it. So that's definitely another big tip. And in my honest opinion, if you utilize Becker and you truly like actually completes all of the lectures and you know do the multiple choice and you do the sims and you do what you're supposed to do with the program there's real i don't want to say there's no way you won't pass because obviously you know you can have a bad test day but it truly does set you up for success and i just don't see how you could truly complete all four programs and you know complete them the way you're supposed to and not pass because they really do set you up for success in my personal opinion and in my experience you just have to know how much risk you're willing to accept if you're somebody who can accept a lot of risk with the exams and do the bare minimum of studying and just go in and hope for a 75 then that's great but if you tend to have test anxiety or if you're a bad test taker i definitely recommend you know maybe putting in a little bit more extra effort into your studying and completing as much as you can of each section of your study course because that will ultimately provide you a lot more wiggle room if your test anxiety is really bad or if you just have a bad testing day And before we get into my scheduling and like my score breakdown for each exam, the last thing I wanna say is I do know that Becker exam software did change and I was about to test for BEC and that's when they changed it to having mini exams. Um, for all of my exams except for BEC, I did not have mini exams. And then BEC, I had the mini exams and I didn't take them, I just took the like three simulated exams the same way that I had done for the other exams because I didn't want to change anything up for my last exam. So with that being said, if you make your study schedule similar to I did, definitely, you're probably definitely gonna have to adjust the template to account for those mini exams because um, I would recommend taking them now if you're starting out um, with them being there because that's part of completing everything. And you know, they set things up the way they do for a reason. You might have to adjust the template a little bit because of that. 
For how I made my schedule, I would utilize Becker's calendar timeline thing where you can input the date that you're gonna be testing and then how many sections you wanna do a week. And I would fill out how many sections I wanted to complete a week. And I would put in my ideal test day and that would give me an idea of how many weeks it was going to take me start to finish for studying and have time to review and take all of the mock exams. And I would construct a schedule based off of that and sort of split things up sequentially by all of the lectures and multiple choice, then sins, and then mock exams. And I would kind of just work backwards from the date that I have my exam scheduled. For each exam, I tried to get anywhere from two to three sections done a week. So like, for example, for reg, this has R1 and R2 for the first week, R3 through R5, R6 through R8, two weeks of simulated exams, and then the actual exam. And I would follow this in terms of the calendar I was making for myself, but I didn't necessarily do the exact content every week that Becker suggests you do because I did things a little bit differently. So starting off, so for reg, I don't have an exact picture of my study schedule for reg, unfortunately, because I had just completely like deleted everything that I had in that Google doc and changed it for audit and didn't save the reg one, or at least I can't find a picture of it anywhere. So. I don't have my exact reg one, but I will have it for my other schedules and I'll, but I will have it for my other exams and I'll put the screenshot of those up when I talk about them. So basically I would start off with lectures, reading and multiple choice first. So for each exam, I would count up through Becker's website, how many total modules there were. So I would just click through each little section and subsection and I would just count up how many total M's there were for each section. I ultimately decided that four to six modules a day was the sweet spot in terms of getting lectures and multiple choice questions done. Some days I would do a little more, some days I would do a little less. So I would basically take the total number of modules that there were when I would go through and count. So let's say 70 for example, and I would divide it by five modules a day on average. And that would give me how many days total I needed to allocate to doing lectures and multiple choice only. So this is excluding Sims. I would also read during this time. Honestly, I didn't really read the reg book until right before I was taking my exam, which was an, a mistake. But all the other exams, I would skim the module, then I would do the lecture, and then I would do the multiple choice. And that's just kind of how I did things from then on. So for with my 70 modules total and five modules a day example, that comes out to two weeks exactly, 14 days. So I would put that in the first block of my schedule template, and I would say for example August 1st to August 15th and then I would put complete all lectures and multiple choice for all sections. I would know for those first two weeks all I would be working on is completing that total number of modules in that set amount of time that I designated for it. And some days you're going to feel a lot less motivated than others and you're only going to be able to do like three but then other days you'll want to like make up for it so you'll do a little more on other days but in general you would want to average around five a day. When I would go through the multiple choice this is like a really messy thing to do but it just worked for me and it was nice for when I revisited um, each section when I was doing sims. So when I would do my multiple choice, if I missed something, I would write down like the correct answer or why I missed what I missed just in little bullet points on the last page of the section. So like right before the next section started. And that just like kind of helped me see like when I was reviewing like, oh, this is like what I struggled with with multiple choice and why I missed it. And I like just having all of that in one place instead of it being like, sporadically out throughout notebooks. I always knew that the multiple choice stuff I struggled with would always be on that last page of each module. So then for SIMS, I know you're probably like, when did you do SIMS? Why didn't you do them with everything? I utilized SIMS as sort of how I reviewed and sort of like what fueled me to put everything together. And this is how my friend did it and how she suggested doing things. And I just thought it sounded pretty smart because I was like, oh, that makes sense to like actually be working through everything that you just learned in lectures and multiple choice and applying it in SIMS. Doing that closer to your actual exam date and closer to you taking the mock exams makes way more sense. I did the exact same things for sims. I would look at the total number of sims, I would go through and count, and it's always really intimidating when you do this, because you'll be like, oh my gosh, there's 120 sims total. So I would take the total number of sims and reg, for example, and say it's 
a hundred and I would divide by how many sims I thought I could do per day. And let's say I thought I could do eight per day. So then that comes out to about 13 days. So then I would know I needed 13 days to complete all the sims. And honestly, the amount of sims that I felt I could do for each exam differed because each exam sims are really different. Like I remember regs were really hard to me but, and BECs were really hard, but audit and FAR, they were typically a little bit shorter if I remember correctly. I would briefly skim back through the module. I wouldn't like sit there and like detail read it. I would just skim through to refresh myself. And then I would go back to my multiple choice questions and I would reattempt only the ones I missed from the first time around before I started doing the sims. That usually wouldn't take a ton of time. Then I would get started on my sims for that module. And I would just do that while I was getting all the sims done. And that was kind of like the way I did it. Unless I got a question like for the most part right or completely right, I would always watch the video explanation for the sims and I would rework it on paper and rework it the way they reworked it because a lot of this is about knowing how to think in terms of an accountant and like in terms of somebody taking this exam. So doing it the way they solve it typically is very helpful because you see where you slipped up and what you didn't really see and what you need to adjust in your problem solving. And I would always try to do bullet points of like, what I missed. So like if I did the wrong formula or if I just solved something wrong using incorrect steps, I would always write out the correct step. And that way it made it really simple. If there was something I was really struggling with and then right before the exam, I really wanted to go back and look at it. Instead of going back and looking at a wrong problem that I solved, I would go back and see why I did or how I did the problem wrong. And I would see what the correct way to do the problem is. And I would always do that in a separate color pen. And I would even take notes on the sim videos. So like if they like said something and I was like, oh, I didn't realize that like I would just jot a note down of it I would just kind of do what I felt right during this review time get because during this time when I was doing the sims I typically got through sims a lot faster than I got through lectures and multiple choice just because it was just solving the problems and skimming through old stuff so if I felt it was right to make flashcards because there were a lot of formulas I would make flashcards if I felt like I needed to type up an outline I would type up an outline and that's the crazy thing is each exam I did something a little different just because I was different things work for different exams and different things didn't work for other exams like i typed up a whole study guide for um government and not-for-profit accounting for far and then i typed up an entire study guide for far section one and two because i just struggled with those sections to begin with so that's just what felt right when i was reviewing so that's what i would do but i also wrote out a lot of things so it just depends on what feels right for you. And you'll kind of know when you're going, you're like, okay, I think I need to put these on flashcards. So all of like the ratios, for example, that you have t that you're tested on in FAR, Audit, and in BEC, I just made flashcards when I took Audit and I used those same flashcards when I took FAR afterwards and when I took BEC afterwards. And then I would add to them if I needed to, if there were extra formulas. So like for formulas, I really liked using flashcards. For journal entries and stuff, I really liked writing it out. Um, and then for more conceptual stuff, sometimes I would just type it because it was a lot quicker. And I also want to add that for my scheduling, I only had a true designated review period where all I was doing was reviewing during um, my FAR exam. And that's because I felt like there was the most content on it. So I felt like I actually needed some time to like not be trying to cram out send and not trying to be cramming out lectures and multiple choice to where I was truly just reviewing the content and all the other exams, I would, my only review in between finishing my sims and taking the exam was the review I did after I took each mock. For mock exams, I basically would say what day am I testing and then I would go three days before my test date and that would be the day I took my last mock. So I like to have two days in between my last mock and the day I tested. I didn't like to have more than that because I felt like it was too long and I didn't like to have less than that because I felt like it was I got burnt out too quickly. So if I was testing on Saturday, then I knew that I wanted to take my last mock on Wednesday so that I would have Thursday and Friday to get any last minute review done. And I would work backwards for the mock exams as well. And then for like my second mock exam, I would do it two days before the third one. If I took my last mock exam on a Wednesday, then I was taking my second one on a Monday. And then I was taking my first one on a Saturday. So I liked having a day in between the first and second mock exam and a day between the second and third mock exam. And then 
two full days in between the last mock and the actual exam. And I did that for every single test. I did this when I was taking the ACT in high school and this is just like what works for me. I would truly set myself up like in a testing environment. So I would leave my apartment, like literally leave. I would go to my community space in my apartment, like on another floor and I would sit at a desk and I would stick my phone in my backpack and I wouldn't have any study notes out with me and I would just sit down and I would take the exam and do it in the time allotted and I would take the mock on my computer. To mimic your test day environment as much as you can to help eliminate the anxiety of test day so that you get used to it when you're taking your mocks. I don't know if the mock exams are still like this, but the first one, it wasn't a true representation of the actual test um, because it just split up all of the topics evenly. So it was kind of a good way to see what you needed more work on and what you were doing well on. So I would typically, for my very first mock exam for each exam since that's the way it was. I did all my mock exams in the morning for the most part and I would always try to start them around the actual time I'd be starting them but it didn't always work that way. I'd take the mock exam and then I would take like two, anywhere from two to three hours to just like not do anything. I would either like go work out or I would like take a nap or just, you know, do something like that. And then I would revisit the mock exam in the afternoon after taking the exam and I would go through all of the multiple choice that I missed or any that I flagged, even if I got them right. And I would write out the question and the answer. And the reason I did that is because it was way more effective than just glancing at it and being like, oh, I got this one wrong. Oh, I got that one wrong. I think it's one of the most effective and quickest ways to get yourself to be like in good standing for all the topics and good standing for the things you're not as good at. So, so for example, this is Mach 1 and I for FAR and I basically would just write out, you know, number five, here's the question, here's the answer. If there were certain points that made the answer why it was right, I would write out what those little points were. And that was just the best way for me to cram as much as I could before the exam into my short-term memory to remember like why I missed something. And this was very tedious, but it truly is very helpful if you have time to do it. And then I would do the exact same thing for Sims, but I typically would do that the next day. I didn't want to burn myself out the day of. And I usually found that just reviewing the multiple choice and taking the mock in one day was the best way to do it. And then the next day I would go over the Sims and then I would do that in the morning and I would watch the video explanations, rework it the way they reworked it and take any applicable notes. And then after that, I would have the rest of the day to work on what I wasn't doing well on before I took my second mock. And so I would look at the score breakdown. Typically, if I was under like 70 or 65%, I knew that I kind of needed to drill that a lot more than the other areas. And I would really just try to focus on those areas that I scored under like 70 or 65% on. The way I would revisit those sections is I would go back and I would rewatch any sims that were similar to the ones I had on the mocks and I would just watch the videos and try to like ingrain the thought process in my head. And I would go back and rework the multiple choice. I would go back and reread. I would go back and, you know, write little crash course sheets. And I'm not kidding when I tell you that these little crash course sheets are the best thing you can do for yourself. Basically, I would try to fit as much as I can and in few sheets of paper as I can for each section. So for example, this is my little crash packet for F1 through F4 for FAR. I have the multi-step income statement here on the front and I did it pretty small and I did the single step income statement right next to it. If there were journal entries that I really struggled with, oh my gosh, construction accounting, the completed contract and percent of completion. I had like the steps to how to complete the problem written out next to like when you use which one and the formulas and then I would do the journal entries on a page. You know, like this This is all I had for F2 because I ended up like really getting good at F2 so I didn't need a lot. And then for, you know, F3, like I would do like little tables and journal entry examples. And then things that I like really struggled with in FAR um, were interest capitalization and non-monetary transactions. So those are things that I spent a lot of time drilling. And so I did like full pages for each of those and I labeled them as such, as you can see. I knew that impairment analysis was really important. So I like wanted to have that laid out as well. So this is like the t kind of thing I would work on in the days between my mock exams. Like the way I reviewed right before the exam and between my mock exams after I had gone over my mock was making these crash course sheets because you know condensing the information is studying in and of itself because you're trying to get it in as simple as terms as possible and be as summarized as possible to where you can still remember it and writing it all out like this was so helpful and i did this for every single exam for the sections that i felt the most uncomfortable with 
and far I kind of did it with every section because I honestly felt uncomfortable with something from every section but for the other exams like I only did it for reg I only did it for R3 and then R6 through 8 and I had crash sheets for each of those and I would those were always the things that I looked at last before I went into the exam and that was just what I spent my time doing in between my mock exams because you're wanting to drill the areas that you're not scoring well on because if you're already scoring well on them chances are you really don't need to revisit them again before that soon before the exam like you can glance at it really quickly but you don't need to be writing stuff out for stuff you already know you need to be drilling and writing down the things that you are struggling with it's going to help it get it in your short-term memory and having these little crash sheets i have a very photographic memory so as long as I looked at the crash sheet a minimum of three times, it would get to the point where I could picture where something was on a page and that would help me recall so much easier. And that's the biggest key is you want to make them as short as possible because you don't want to have to go through so many pages in your review for those last few days because you're making these within your last week of the exam if you're studying the way I did. Because of that, you don't want them to be super long. You don't want to be, you know, word for word writing out the book. You are summarizing this crap. You want to make sure that you are reading through that packet or those whatever sheets you have a minimum of twice a day twice a day once it's leading up to the exam because the more you look at it the more you're going to be able to recall what's on it and i would really just spend that time writing and it was so exhausting but i i would get so much done on that day in between my first mock and my second mock and between my second and my third mock so that i didn't have to do as much on those last two days before my exam typically the two days before my exam i was like finishing up any writing out that i wanted to do and then the day before I would just read all the notes that I had and I wouldn't really like try to work any problems. I would just do like all the reading of everything that I had created and prepared. If I really struggled with like multiple choice for a specific section or with Sims, I would go back and revisit those as well. It was really just dependent on how I was doing for each module and each section. I remember I really started panicking about uh, not-for-profit accounting right before FAR and I was like, you know what, I really need to drill these multiple choice. And I went back and I reread at that section, which was F8 when I was taking it. I reread it and made like a crash course study guide from the whole section, literally like three days before the exam. And I just kept drilling it and I would like make little 10 to 15 multiple choice sets of questions and just drill the multiple choice. So if there's something that you're like really, really struggling with, that's when I would pull in the multiple choice and I would just do little 10 to 15 question sets until I was getting like at 75% because repetition is going to be your best friend with actually solidifying what you're trying to learn. It was nice to have something that I knew I could look at and look completely through in less than 30 minutes and I would always up until for the last three or four nights before the exam, the last thing I would do before I went to bed would be to like read through the packets that I had made for my week areas. And then the day before the exam, once again, I'm just drilling those packets. And if you don't have a lot of time, I highly suggest only doing these for your really, really weak areas. That's what I did for each exam. And I'm not going through each exam, how I studied for each one specifically, because that's just the process I followed for each one. But when I'm telling you that I have so many of these packets, like all the packets I made for audit all together, like opinions and everything like that. And then BEC, I had a lot. These were my BEC packets that I handmade. I did a mix of typing and writing for FAR. I ended up not really using these typed ones just because my photographic memory was a lot is a lot better when it's stuff that I write. And then I would just work in notebooks for all of my mock exams and for the practice sims and the notes for multiple choice. Okay, so let's go over my score reports and my mock exam scores. So I'm gonna tell you my mock exam scores and I'm gonna tell you my real scores. I'm gonna have my study template screenshotted next to me. So I'm going to put my screenshot of sort of like my breakdown of like my completion of the Becker material. Um, it says I had a 64% average on my exam mock scores, which I did take all the mocks for all the exams, like I mentioned. I don't think that's accurate because when I went back and looked, it split up my first exam into the three mini exam scores instead of it just being my mock one exam score. Um, so it kind of like manipulated that a little bit. So I don't think that's what I actually 
That wasn't my actual average of my mock exams. And my final exam score was an 85. All I know for reg is that I got a 75 on my first and my second mock. And then I don't really know what my third mock score was for that. I wanna say I got a 69 on it because I remember it being lower and I was like really nervous and really scared. And I'm like 99% sure it was a 69. So 75, 75, and 69 for an average of about 73. And then I got an 85 on the actual thing. And then for my breakdown of my actual report from the Texas board, I, I will put that right here. So you can see I was stronger in section one, two, four, and five, but I was comparable in section three. And then I was stronger on multiple choice and weaker on Sims or comparable on Sims. And I remember thinking that the Sims were very hard on reg compared to what I was prepared for. Um, so that was my score breakdown. So next is audits. It, it just took a lot of rereading and I actually think that at the end of the day, my growth and knowledge from what, from when I started to when I finished was strongest with audit. I got a 76 on my first sim simulated exam, a 75 on my second simulated exam, and I don't know what I got on my third one, but I don't think I had a passing average going into that exam. I think I also didn't do very well on the last one. Um, and then on my actual exam, I got an 83 and I was stronger in all of the sections for the content area. And then for overall performance, I was stronger multiple choice. And once again, comparable in Sims. And I remember after this one thinking that I did really good on the Sims and that I didn't feel 100% at all on the multiple choice, but it turns out I actually was comparable on the sins and stronger on the multiple choice. And then for FAR, oh sweet baby Jesus, looking at FAR scores just makes my heart race. Um, I had a 66 on my first simulated exam, a 60 on my second simulated exam, and I don't know what I got on my third one since they split my third score up amongst the mini exams, but I wanna say it was not very good. I think I had a 23 point bump and I was stronger in everything. And I was so proud of myself. I didn't record, I recorded my score reaction for every exam except for FAR because I was 100% convinced I failed FAR and I ended up getting an 87. I think my average exam score was a 64 on my mocks going into it and then I got an 87 because I remember it being like 23 points I think for my bump. And I came out of it crying, I was sobbing. Um, completely convinced I failed. It was really hard to like carry on and start studying for my last exam, thinking that I failed, especially because I waited three weeks for my FAR score. And then I got it and I saw that I was stronger in everything and I just absolutely couldn't believe it. Cause I had tested up until the very last second for FAR and for REG. Um, and then audit, I think I finished a little bit early in BEC, I used most of the time, I think. I don't really remember exactly. But FAR was so hard. I just remember thinking the Sims that I was going to be weaker on Sims and that I was going to be comparable on multiple choice. So I was really thinking I'd be straddling a 75 and it ended up being my highest score. So don't let FAR discourage you with the mock exams because they make them really hard on purpose so that you go in really prepared. And I just, I felt like on test day that I was just really heavily tested on my weak areas and that's just like what really freaked me out coming out of it. And then last but not least, BEC. I was so burnt out with BEC. There were some topics that I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna accept that I just don't really know this. BEC's mock exams are really weird because the first one was really hard and I thought the third one was really hard, but then the second one, I remember thinking it was a cakewalk the entire time I was doing the mock exam. I got a 62% on my first mock exam and then I got an 85% on my second one. And I'm not gonna lie, when I got that 85%, I kind of like, I don't wanna say I slacked, but I definitely didn't study near as hard as I did for the other exams in those last final days, just because I was so burnt out and ready to be done. Um, and getting that 85 kind of told me that I would be fine. And I was very confident in my ability to do the writing portion of the exam. In BEC, I was stronger in only two areas. Um, so the first and third section, and then comparable in the second, fourth, and fifth. And I thought it was so funny that I was comparable in econ, cause that's like, I didn't really study it much because I completed all the content for econ, but I didn't like go back and study it much and review it because I felt really comfortable with it. But I think a lot of the econ questions I have were just harder. And I was stronger in multiple choice, weaker in sims, which was my first time being weaker in sims. And then thank God for the written communications because I don't think I would have passed this exam without the written communications, or at least I would have not gotten higher than a 75. And I ended up getting an 84 on BEC. So I didn't have a big bump with BEC because I think my final average going into it was like a 70, 
nine or an 80 maybe. Um, so I had a really small bump of BEC. Wish I would have written down all of my mock exam scores, but I didn't. So that is my score breakdown of everything. And um, I wanted to share that because I just think it's helpful to like be like, hey, here's my credibility for this really long video and for this explanation of how I studied and why I studied the way I studied. I think that is everything. Um, thank you so much for watching this really long video. I just like really wanted to make sure I included as much as I can. So I'm sorry it was really long, but I'll try to put chapters in the video so that you can like go to the point you want to go to. Um, but this is just what was tried and true for me. I, I got them knocked out in five months technically. And I will be sure to leave like the templates down below for how I studied for um, my exams. I'll try to just make it into a template for how I studied for my exams and that way you all can kind of like manipulate it yourself and then you all can just pause on the screenshots that I provided earlier in the video if you want to see like an example of like my actual legitimate template and not like my prep template for you all. So thank you so so much for watching this video and thank you all so much for just being subscribers and supporting me because I can't tell you all how much it meant to me that I was able to take these exams and study full time and get them done before working. And I truly, I literally wouldn't have been able to do that if you all didn't watch my videos. So thank you so much again. And thank you so much to everyone who has supported me along the way. Um, I have a good bit of subscribers that I know are taking these exams and I get messages from a lot of y'all when you're getting close to your exams and you're like, I'm nervous and I try to answer as many of them as I can, but I'm sorry if I haven't gotten to them. And once again, I'm really sorry that it took me as long as it did to film this video, but I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions at all, please leave them down below and I will do my best to get to them. Good luck if you are taking these exams. They are so hard and they are so brutal, but it feels so good to have them done. And I highly encourage getting them done before working if you can and with all that being said I think that's everything I cannot believe that I like hand wrote that much stuff and that's not even everything that's literally just my crash courses that's not all the writing I did during my mock exams and during going through the sims and stuff so pricey sure to subscribe and follow me on social media if you aren't already and i will talk to you all in my next video and also check out my podcast if you haven't checked that out um that would mean the world to me my podcast is like my baby um it's in bloom podcast and it's available everywhere that you can listen to the podcast so thank you so much for watching again for the millionth time and i love you all and i will see you all in my next video